Hello guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I wanted to share my skincare routine with you guys and I'm going to be splitting up this video into two parts. The first part is this video, which is going to be my morning skincare routine. And the second part will be up next week, which will be my nighttime skincare routine. I'll also briefly discuss the products and why each step is important and products that I've used in the past and why I will or won't be repurchasing them. So without further ado, let's get into my skincare routine. So just as a disclaimer, I have dry skin and I live in Edmonton, Canada, and the weather here is very dry, especially in the colder months, which is like nine or 10 months out of the year. So I choose my skincare products based off of that, but I will also tell you how you can kind of adjust my products for oilier skin or more combination skin. So the very first thing I do in the morning, of course, is wash my face, and for that I use the ultra gentle daily cleanser from Neutrogena and it's exactly what it says it's an ultra gentle daily cleanser this is great for people that do have dry skin but you might want to change for a more gel consistency or a foaming cleanser if you have oilier skin especially at nighttime the cleansing agents in gel or foaming cleansers are much stronger and they'll probably um, get rid of a lot of oil production that you do have more than people with dry skin if that makes sense people with extremely dry skin might benefit from just using water in the morning that's actually enough because if you properly cleanse your skin at night then you won't need something as strong in the morning but i like using this and it's worked great for me and yes i will be repurchasing when this is done it's almost done after cleansing my skin i go in with an essence and the essence that i'm using is the fresh vitamin nectar antioxidant glow water it's a mist. It's a very versatile product. You can use it as an essence, like I use it. You can use it as a makeup setting spray or as a makeup primer. You can also use it to refresh your skin throughout the day. It has vitamin C, vitamin E, and B5, and it has antioxidants. Antioxidants are used in skincare products to deal with the free radicals that occur in our skin. These free radicals damage our cells and DNA, which lead to a more sped up process of aging, which is what we do not want. A product like this as, a, as an essence is great. It has very good ingredients. The only thing is, is it does have fragrance. And if you are sensitive to fragrance, then you might want to avoid products like this. Also, fragrance can sensitize your skin over time. But for now, I'm okay with fragrance. My skin's not sensitive to fragrance, keywords being for now. Yeah, I, I really don't understand why so many skincare products have fragrance in them. It has no benefit to your skin. I guess it does give you that spa-like experience that most, I think a lot of people do enjoy. Um, I don't really mind. I won't avoid fragrance for now. If you are sensitive, you might want to avoid this product. The next thing I use in the mornings is a vitamin C serum. Think of a vitamin C serum as your skin's daily fresh cup of orange juice. Vitamin C is one of the most well-researched ingredients used in skincare. It's been shown to reduce sunspots or scarring due to acne. It's also been shown to brighten up the skin and um, reduce dullness and overall even out your skin tone. When looking at an ingredients list of a product that says it has vitamin C in it, you'll usually notice the words ascorbyl, ascorbic, or ascorbate. Because there are many different derivatives of vitamin C, the original form of vitamin C is ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid. The reason that most companies don't use the original or pure form of vitamin C is because it's a very unstable compound. So if it's exposed to light or air, then it will lose its potency and no longer be effective in your skincare product, which is why people usually use the derivatives of vitamin C. And as I mentioned, you can spot these derivatives by looking at the ingredient list and seeing the words ascorbyl, ascorbate, or ascorbic. These derivatives are more stable forms of vitamin C, which means that they'll be more stable for longer. You want your vitamin C serum to be stable for as long as possible because you don't want it to expire as soon as you take it out of the box, right? You want it to have a longer kind of drawer, not shelf life, but drawer life. 
If you notice that your vitamin C serum has gone a bit orange or has changed color, has darkened, then it's probably not working anymore. So these derivatives have a longer drawer life which is great and they're not as potent as vitamin C which means if your skin's a little sensitive then you might even benefit from using these derivatives because they won't sensitize your skin. The ones I've tried are the Sephora Collection Vitamin C Plus E Ultra Glow Serum and the Ole Hendrickson True Serum. The Sephora Collection Serum, let's say, well, is... It's not a vitamin C serum, let's just put it at that. If you look at the ingredients, you're going to want your vitamin C serum to be one of the first ingredients that show up on the list. Not the f exact first, first one, but at least up there. Vitamin C shows up as one of the last ingredients on this ingredient list. It's a hydrating serum. It has some good hydrating ingredients. It's pretty simple. It's a good serum to have. It's like an all around serum, but it's marketing itself as a vitamin C plus E serum. And I don't really think it's that. It worked okay. It's affordable. It's more affordable than other serums on the market. It's all right. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. The True Serum on the other hand is pretty great. It has sodium ascorbyl which is what I mentioned, sodium ascorbyl phosphate as the second ingredient, which is great. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate is a vitamin C derivative. And as you can see, the bottle is sort of fogged and tinted, which will reduce light going into the bottle, which makes the vitamin C stable for longer because it's, it's not exposed to as much light. It's a great serum. It worked great for me. I've repurchased it a few times already and I have noticed a difference in my skin. However, I think I want to try different serums. I think I'm going to try the Ordinary's Ascorbyl Tetra Isopalmitate. I think that's how you say it, 20% in vitamin F. I just want to branch out. It's pretty expensive and I'm a student, so it's not that great to keep repurchasing. So when I finish this up, I'm going to try the vitamin C from The Ordinary which has promising reviews and I will for sure let you guys know how I like it. After using any serum you're going to want to go over it with a moisturizer to lock the serum's ingredients in or else you might have the serum kind of evaporating into the air and then you're wasting all that money that you spent on good products so you don't want that. And my favorite moisturizer of all time is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. This is for intensely dehydrated skin it is great for people who live in drier climates and it's also great for people who have sensitive skin it's actually marketed as a product for people who have eczema because it has colloidal oatmeal colloidal oatmeal is a great product to use if you have very sensitive very dry skin it's very great for calming the skin calming redness soothing the skin so this is excellent for people who have irritated skin or sensitive skin i use it because my skin gets very dry in this weather as i've mentioned a thousand times already so yeah even if i have a few spots or something i feel like if i apply this moisturizer it reduces the irritation it reduces the redness and it calms my spots down so i'm sure it'll work if you have irritated skin however this is not recommended for people who have oily skin at all it's going to be too heavy i've tried using this in more humid climates and it never sinks in it just stays on your skin forever so i don't recommend this if you have oily skin if you have oily skin you might love using a more gel or water based moisturizer one that i've used in the past is the ole hendrickson truth sea rush brightening gel cream it sinks into the skin very quickly it's moisturized it has that additional vitamin C layer, but it is pretty expensive. It's more expensive than the first eight beauty one So I don't think I will be repurchasing I got these in sets when I bought the truth serum, which is why I use both of them up. They're both empty I enjoy them. They're great. If you have very oily skin, you might want to use a more water-based. I have tried the Tarte H2O moisturizer in the past when I used to live back home in Aruba and I enjoyed it. It's very good. It's a great moisturizer that does sink into the skin immediately. It's great. Another more affordable option for a moisturizer is the Sephora Collection All Day Hydrator. This is a basic moisturizer. It leaves your skin pretty glowy. It hydrates your skin and it seals in all your serums when I choose a moisturizer I don't necessarily want it to have crazy ingredients I don't necessarily need it to have an extra layer of vitamin C because I have already 
use a vitamin C serum, right? So I just want a moisturizer that will lock in all of the great ingredients in my essence, in my serum, which is why I usually choose moisturizers that are more affordable. When I know I will be applying makeup or if my under eyes are extra zombie-like, I always go in with the Ole Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream. It has brightening effects from the vitamin C and it also reduces puffiness or kind of reduces the sunken in look of your eyes. And if I apply makeup, I know that my under eyes will look like the Sahara Desert if I do not apply an eye cream first. So yeah. I enjoy this eye cream. I recommend do not get a full size eye cream unless you use so much of it, but it's like, I've had this for a while and I still, and these go bad. I mean, skincare products go bad. You don't want it to go bad before you finish using it up. So I recommend buying the mini version of the eye cream. It's more than enough to last you for however long the expiration date on this thing is usually 12 months. Yeah, I think the mini version is great. I don't think I'll ever buy a full size version of eye cream. Okay, so if there's one thing that I need you to take away from this video, it's that sunscreen in your morning routine is non-negotiable. Guys, I don't wanna say that the sun is the enemy, but Sky knows the sun is the enemy. Outside bad. The sun's scary. It's not, it's not my friend. He wants to hurt me. Right. Safer. Okay, I guess we need the sun. But it's the enemy to our skin. And oh yeah, cancer, right? You need to wear sunscreen, okay? Non-negotiable. Okay, I'm glad that's cleared up. So there are two types of sunscreens. There are physical sunscreens and there are chemical sunscreens. The chemical sunscreens usually contain the ingredients oxybenzone or avobenzone. However, I found that I might be allergic to chemical sunscreen, so I stick with physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens, which usually contain zinc oxide or titanium oxide or a combination of both. The one I'm currently using is this one by Copper Tone Pure and Simple 100% Zinc Oxide. I'm just trying this out. It is pretty heavy, so I wouldn't recommend this sunscreen for people who have oily skin. I I know that Ren makes a 100% mineral sunscreen that is matte, so you might enjoy that if you have oily skin. However, if you don't really care about chemical or physical sunscreen, of course you can use the chemical sunscreens. The chemical sunscreens don't leave a white cast. The zinc oxide and the titanium oxide in the physical sunscreen are what cause this white cast and make you look like Casper the Friendly Ghost if you're me. So to avoid this, I like mixing in my sunscreen with the Drunk Elephant Debronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops. This is actually a great product to include into your skincare routine. It's not just bronzing drops, it actually has antioxidant ingredients. It has cocoa extract, which is a great antioxidant. So you're blocking the creation of free radicals with your sunscreen, and you're also dealing with the free radicals that are already in your skin, which I think is a great combination. So if you mix in bronzing drops with your physical sunscreen, it kind of creates this weird skin tint. So it's no longer a white cast, but it's sort of a skin toned cast, if that makes sense. So on many days, I actually just use this and I don't apply concealer, I don't apply foundation. It gives you a nice bronzed glow and it also slightly evens out your skin tone. For now, it's great. I'll finish using this, but after it's done, I'll probably try out something else. Okay guys, so that is my morning skincare routine. I hope it was informative. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask them down below or you can message me on Instagram and I would be happy to answer them for you. If you're interested in what I use during my nighttime skincare routine, please tune into my channel next week because that'll be up next week, which is part two of this skincare routine series. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. See you in my next video, guys. Bye.